you like our content, please like, subscribe, and click the notification bell to get alerts when we introduce new videos. In this brief video demonstration, we're going to take a look at setting up an 8021X WLAN in a smart zone environment. Let's get started. All right, I'm logged into smart zone in my home lab environment, and we're wanting to create a WLAN that is secured with 802.1x. So we don't want this to be set up with a pre-shared key that could be you know, shared with people that we don't intend to access our WLAN. So we wanna make sure that anybody authenticating or joining into our WLAN rather is authenticated um, with 802.1x, and we can validate that they should actually be on there. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to set up an authentication server. We're going to do that from underneath security authentication. And we do have two different types of authentication servers that we can deploy within this environment. We could do a non-proxy authentication server, which basically means that the authentication requests are going to come from the APs themselves. So the a each AP that a user is connecting to will then reach out to the authentication server to do the 802.1x um, communication and then the the authentication server will communicate back to the AP who will hand that back to the client. The other option is to do a proxy authenticator. So if you want to have the controller be the device that handles all the authentication requests, that's what this mode does. So we could set up the smart zone to communicate with the uh, authentication server directly and it actually in some cases can simplify the authentication server configuration because you only have to specify the controllers as clients to uh, communicate on the authentication server backend um, whereas on the non proxy backend you have to define any you have to define any AP that is going to be communicating in with the authentication server there's pros and cons to both you can set up um, secondary servers and, and on proxied servers you can set up health checks and things like that so really um, what's going to work best for your environment is what you need to um, determine and um, then proceed with the configuration of uh, i'm going to take a look at the non-proxy configuration real quick uh, i actually do have both of these types set up in my environment um, the configuration aspects of each are pretty much pretty similar in terms of what you need to provide um, so you can see here that I have one defined at the system level um, called non-proxy radius. So this radius server is going, or this authentication server is going to be available to any of the uh, domains and subdomains underneath the system. Uh, I'm going to just highlight this and choose configure so you can look at it. So we've named it. We've uh, specified the type as radius. Again, if I wanted to enable secondary service servers here, I could do that. Um, but I have my primary server, the IP address, the port, and the shared secret uh, all defined here. If I wanted to uh, create some additional role mappings and specify group attribute values, I could further manipulate um, what's happening after a successful authentication. So maybe uh, if I have an 802.1x authenticated user that I want to put in a specific VLAN, um, I can do that. Or if I want their device to be um, managed differently, maybe restricted in some way, we could certainly do that as well. So we can apply some things um, to an authenticated user to um, give them kind of a different customization after they've logged in. So uh, I'm not going to change anything. I just wanted to show you that configuration. So I'm going to choose OK here. So we've got the authentication server set up. The next step that we need to actually perform is to set up a network for 802.1x authentication, a WLAN. So we're going to go under um, network, wireless LANs. And you can see we've got a couple here. We've got guest and corp. Um, neither of these are using 802.1x. Uh, they both say open. So we're going to create another server here, and we're going to just call it 802.1x-corp. And it's going to take that same SSID. Uh, and the big thing that we want to choose here is we want to we want to modify the method to be 802.1x-eep. When we click this, we're going to get some additional authentication uh, options that appear within this tree. So we're going to select that here. Um, you could still select your your encryption types. Um, I'm going to leave the default of WPA2, um, but authentication and accounting services, what appeared when we chose 
the 8021X EEP option for the method. So the first thing here is you can toggle on whether or not you're wanting to use a proxy server. So right now with this slider set to off, it is in non-proxy mode. So any of the um, options in this drop-down list are going to be non-proxy. So, and if we click that, we can see my non-proxy radius server here. We're gonna go ahead and select that. Again, if you wanted a proxied server, you would set that to on and your proxied server will, would appear in that list. Uh, you can additionally set up an accounting service if you wanted to do some uh, accounting as well. You could uh, do non-proxied or proxied accounting and select that. Um, it's not required for what we're needing to demonstrate here, so I'm not even going to turn that on. And really, those are the two options that you must specify to get this working. So that's actually all I'm going to choose here, and I'm going to go ahead and select OK. So you can see now that we have a third WLAN um, in this list, and it is doing the authentication method as 802.1x. Um, what we should ha what should be happening now is that WLAN should be getting pushed down to the APs, and we should be able to see that show up on our device. So what I'm going to do right now is I am going to bring up my phone. Just give it a second to load in here. So on the phone, we can see we have the 802.1x-corp wireless LAN. I'm going to go ahead and choose that. And instead of at getting asked for a pre-shared key, we are getting, um, we're getting a different dialogue here. So we're being asked for the certificate, the username, the password. I'm actually going to choose not to validate a certificate in this lab. I do not have certificate stores set up to do that. Um, the username that I want to use is user1. The password is just password. Everything else looks good here. I'm going to go ahead and choose connect. At this point, we should be pushed in and authenticated. And again, we're at, right away, we're connected. So this guy did the 802.1x authentication. If we go over to monitor and we look at our wireless clients, we should actually see, let me refresh here, we should see the phone show up. And I'll give it a second to do that. Um, and it should specify that it is authenticated with 802.1x. So we see the phone. We see what WLAN it's connected in on, and if we highlight the phone down on the bottom, we can see that it did in fact authenticate with 802.1x. So this is an easy way to set up um, authentication. Um, if you want to utilize Radius or LDAP services in your environment so that you can uh, uniquely secure the WLAN so that only authorized individuals gain access. That's all we have to show for this quick demo, but we do hope that you can join us in the future for additional demonstrations.